um, uh, layouts, maps, and that kind of thing. Uh, I know Marty Egan is here. Marty, correct? Yes. Uh, okay, Marty's here. And I believe, uh, who else, Tim? Yeah, I'm here. All right, so Tim's here to speak about it as well. And so is Greg Blasco. But yep, Tim and Greg were uh, involved in, or are involved, I should say, in this trail. Uh, and uh, I will let them and, and Marty speak to it all. Uh, I'll just say that Roger and I were up there and took a look at it after we had this little bit of conversation. Here we go. Here's, here's a layout of what is being proposed. Um, please, gentlemen, either Greg, Tim, somebody take, take the ball and run. Tim, Tim, you want me to speak to the um, kind of the, or Tim, how about you speak to the overall project and I can uh, describe a little bit as what we're looking at here as far as the uh, satellite view. Sounds good. So uh, we decided that it would be a, a good idea to um, create a trail system um, nearby because we're avid mountain bikers. And we approached Steve at the Army Corps of Engineers and he said, yeah, they were looking to do some trail work anyways. So we laid out a plan on the Army Corps of Engineers on Northfield Brook side um, of it and uh, started building trails and we raked the existing trails and got all those up to date. And then we added some trails and we're, we still have some trails to add over there. But we also thought it would be a really good um, thing for the town to have an access point from the town land onto the, the area. And I've seen several people hiking out there, um, just mountain biking out there on the trails that we already have built. And they really like the, the new trail additions. And um, so then Greg and I laid out the, the plan from Highwood and he can explain how that's gonna work. Right, so I, I guess we, one, one thing to start with uh, in the image that we're looking at here, the bottom left corner, uh, you can see kind of a blue and, and yellow dotted path. That's that's one of the existing trails on the Northfield Brook um, land. So the trail that's highlighted in pink starts from the, co um, the corner of Julia Lane and um, what is a town, uh, sort of town driveway, I guess, to a water station or, or something down to right, the, that goes to the pump station. So what we did is we, we um, Tim and I laid out this particular trail and tried to have at least the least amount of impact to any neighbor. So as soon as you enter the wooded area, which is town, uh, town land, it, it kind of starts to head pretty quickly away from those those two properties off of uh, off of that driveway. Um, so you'll see it sort of follows a terrain of the land. It loops into this this area behind the soccer field. And what it does is then empties out onto, uh, a, I guess it's a sewer easement or, or some sort of easement way for the uh, for that That's pump correct. station. That's correct. So one of the things that we had a when we had a conversation with the neighbors last week was to try to have that area of the trail enter in further down, even further away from the the properties up on Julia Lane. So we did that. We kind of came in maybe twenty or so yards, even further down. Um, the trail then will follow that easement along and then take a, a sort of a sharp right turn onto a sort of a grassy area, which then snakes its way around a, apparently like a retaining pond over there, then again heads uh, sort of over the hill into um, Northfield Brookland. So it's about a third of a mile. Um, would I think I think to Tim's point it gives an access for the community to easily get to the trail system, whether it be their multi-use trails or whether somebody wants to mountain bike down through there, trail run or or hike. Um, I think it's it's a great, you know, great little addition there. Um, you know, I think uh, future plans for this particular short route would be to would be to blaze it with. Um, with, would be with markers so it'd be easy to follow and you know if there was any signage or a kiosk or anything at some point that we you know the the people in town thought was was useful we, we could do that um parking would be encouraged if you were to park and access this this particular route would be at the the parking area near the baseball field or softball field there and you know, people who were going to enter would would head down Julia Lane, and we, you know, we could encourage sort of use of the 
of the side of that road as, as close to the wooded areas as well, just to minimize any impact to, to neighbors in the area. Um, so that's that's kind of the plan at this point. It would access currently four and hopefully soon to be about six to seven miles of uh, multi-use trails in the Northfield Brook uh, Lake rec area. Okay, uh, th thank you. That was Greg, right? Yep. Thank you, Greg, and, and thank you, Tim, as well. Sure. Um, Marty, uh, I, you were initially approached by both Tim and Greg. Uh, do you have some comment you'd like to make or something to add to this discussion? Uh, sure. <clears throat> I would say that um, I, I think the meeting we had with the neighbors last week was a good idea, and that, and that was your call, Ed, but I think bringing them in was probably positive. And as Greg mentioned, uh, there was one neighbor, a female um, near the pump station that had asked if it was possible to move that entry point back up the hill farther away from her property. And I think everybody agreed uh, on that, that we would easily do that if that made her feel more comfortable uh, about it. So I think that was positive. I think the entry point really does not affect any of those neighbors along the pump station access way, uh, the old access way anyway. <clears throat> so I think that was a, a positive thing. I think the neighbors that came um, didn't seem to have any issues with it, which I think is positive. And ultimately, I think to have a, a connection point in Thomaston that allows people from our side of that property to reach the Northfield Brook property um, seems po very positive to me. There's plenty of parking up there uh, for this activity. You know, Tim and Greg indicated it doesn't seem like it's the type of thing where, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to show up for. It's minimal parking, easy access. Um, sewer department was cooperative and uh, in letting us, uh, you know, cross that roadway, I think was good. We've got those emails in place. We've got the insurance from the mountain biking uh themselves and then also we have uh, um, some rules or letter in place from army corps of engineers indicating that uh, they're okay with thomaston people accessing their property uh, from thomaston even after hours when their gates are closed their their policies are clearly that they want that available to people so to me um, i think everything's in place i think uh, everybody's had an opportunity to comment on it i think greg and tim have done an amazing job uh, with the concept, it's really all their thing. I tried to put it forward for them. I think they deserve a lot of credit for the effort that they put into it. And ultimately, they're going to do all the work on the trail themselves, even finishing this uh, last section through Thomaston. So I think it's a super positive thing for people in town to be able to uh, access all of that land and not have to drive all the way to Northfield to do it. We could do it right from our side. Good, thanks. Uh, I would just like to comment on, on one thing in particular. We did inquire about insurance um, and we got what was deemed a sample FOI. And uh, it assume, well, after this meeting, assuming this is approved, we would want an actual FOI. Uh, guys, Greg, Tim, from the yep. association, uh, I can't remember the name of it offhand, that would actually name the Tom that Thomason is insured. Uh, our insurance agent looked at that policy and, and, and felt that it was adequate and insured the Tom appropriately. Okay. No, I, I, I've got, um, I'm good friends with, with John Regan. So he is the uh, Northwest Connecticut chapter president of the New England Mountain Bike Association. Mm -hmm. which is NEMBA. And uh, so he was the one who provided that sample. Um, you, you probably saw some other, you know, some other entities did. listed on there and stuff. So um, I can surely engage John to work closely with Marty in terms of whatever needs to happen to make to make that happen for you. Okay, excellent. Yeah, and I do, I do know, Greg, when I when I had had some contact with him, um, it, you know, he indicated to me that they they wouldn't obviously they wouldn't provide insurance certificate with the town's name on it until they actually had an approval from the town that this was going to happen. Sure. So I think that that's all the the place that we are at this point is they're they're going to want a letter from the either myself or Ed or some governing agency that says Tom Thompson is on board, and then they'll add us to that as an additional insured, send it out to us, and we should be in business. Okay. Um, this is uh, Jeff Dunn. How, um, how much of this trail is actually complete right now and how much has to be constructed if you're moving the entrance from uh, Julia Lane? 
So we haven't really done much beyond marking it so we could get this track via GPS for you. Uh, the only piece that I guess you could say is partially is in place is the sort of the lower left. And it's really just a matter of the field area has been kind of matted down with, with us traveling through it. So that's about the extent of it. But um, it's probably it's probably a minimal amount of work for us to do it that you know we we follow the terrain of the land which suits trail building and it's you know we we've we've gotten a, a pretty good sense of how this would um unfold and it's probably a couple of days of work to really get this in so you can uh, Greg, Greg, if, you you might approval, have... if you get approval then you know you're expecting to get this underway uh, in fairly short order Oh, well, we can definitely, yeah, absolutely. We're, we're, we're anxious to, to get started with it. And, you know, I think that was one of the things we wanted to come away with from this meeting was get a clear understanding of when we could at least start to rough in the trail. Um, it's marked, it's flagged with pin flags now, but, uh, you know, if we get approval to mark or to uh, actually start to rough in what we've identified, we, we could start probably this week. Well, Greg, uh, uh, please, uh, illustrate a little bit on that illustrate, but let me just go there. You indicated to me, because we had talked about trail and trail width and that kind of thing, and mm -hmm. I'm concerned obviously for it's used for other than mountain bikes and trail walking and it, indicate trail width and that kind of thing a little bit so the selectmen understand. Sure. Um, so again, with, this would be what would be called a, a single track trail for for mountain biking so it's it's relatively narrow from that standpoint it's probably in general three feet wide or so at, at any given time i would say that if you can envision your your usual hiking trail it's it's pretty close to that so i would say three feet wide um, we generally are pretty liberal liberal in terms of how we clear um, to the sides of the trail just because it minimizes how often you have to you know, maintain it because, you know, things grow in over time and stuff. So we, we would be able to clear away where, where people could easily, um, you know, ride, ride a mountain bike. If, if, if mountain bikers and hikers were interacting or passing each other, that would, that there's, there'd be enough room for that. Um, but it's not anything that's a, you know, a double track or a road width, anything like that. Okay. Jeff, did you have any other further, any more questions regarding this? And then I'll ask Roger the same. No, I, I think it's uh, fine. Um, th the last time we saw it, did we have the entrance down in the lower left? Is that what you had said? Or was there something? The entrance was initially over on Julia Lane or close to the <laughs> intersection of Julia Lane. And uh, the woman in the house closest to that property expressed at, when we walked uh, some desire to move that a little bit. She, so, her concern was is that people would be parking on the road albeit our road or our entrance to or WPCA's entrance to their pump station. She was concerned about the activity there. So the thought was, is if we moved it over a little bit, uh, then perhaps that would not occur because that's something, that's something that she would be concerned about. So does this drawing reflect that change or has it not been made? It, so so uh, the, the entry point, I, yeah, I can speak a little bit to the entry point. So Tim and I walk that area um, following the meeting on Saturday quite a bit. And that area that's sort of curving around Julia Lane, is it's, it's pretty steep. It drops off pretty quickly in all areas until about where it's shown to sort of head into the woods. But we, what we've done is we've, uh, as soon as we've entered off of Julia Lane, we you know kind of kept it heading straight i guess it's not due south but maybe it is but straight down and and tried to head away from those properties as quickly as that we could the other thing that we could note is we couldn't cut in it's basically just grass that's growing up right now along the left side of julia lane but we can cut in right along that wood line um, to sort of encourage people to stay, you know, sort of out of sight and as, as close to the, the entry point, the actual entry point into the wooded area as possible. So I think we can make it where it's um, very low impact. One thing that we did do as far as a change that's different from what was uh, shown on Saturday is, is you'll see that section along the easement um, down by the pump station there. And I don't know if if, if, Marty, are you highlighting this? I'm not sure who's highlighting this, but yeah, if you go down a little bit there, yeah, it, yeah it's sort of emptied out closer to where the cursor is, maybe even a little further up. 
And we actually brought that about 20 or 40 yards further away so that there wasn't anybody, because there is a view down that easement to that property where, where um, that woman had some concerns. So we tried to move that further away, which we've done. And uh, again, I think it's, I think it's pretty, pretty limited impact uh, to the, to that property at this point. Okay. Uh, Roger, anything you'd like to ask, add? No, um, just make a point. The woman that was there, she lives in the interior lot, house behind her. She That's right. Her house right there, right? Yeah. And she was very concerned, too, about people going in the driveway and accessing the lot. But you folks already addressed this, having the trail separate from her driveway, which mm -hmm. I, I like to see that. Okay. But all in all, I, I'm, I'm in favor of it. So. All right. Well, uh, Jeff, did you have anything for you wanted to ask? No, I'm good. All right, then uh, we'll, I'll simply ask for a motion uh, to approve the, uh, uh, the um, yeah, approve the creation of a, a, um, a mountain bike hiking trail connector that would go through town property and ultimately connect to Northfield Dam trails. Roger seconds that. I'll make, I'll make the motion, I'm sorry. You made the motion. And Jeff will second that. All right. All, uh, all in favor indicate by saying aye, Edmond, aye. Uh, aye, Roger. Jeff, aye. Very good. Uh, gentlemen, you, you have the go ahead. Uh, Marty, I would ask you to compose the letter to uh, whomever needs that letter to indicate they can get us the proper insurance coverage or COI. And that COI, generally, they have to be renewed annually, but uh, insurance companies know that. So uh, please take care of that for us, Marty. OK, you got it. Uh, thank you, Great. gentlemen. Just just one question. Are it, at what point are we clear to, again, start roughing in this trail? Uh, effective immediately. OK, great. All right, thank you. I uh, appreciate everybody's support, Ed and Marty. Uh, no, thanks. and. and uh, oh, you're welcome. Thank you for the good idea. It's yeah, it good, is a good, good benefit idea. for Thank the town. For your efforts. Uh, the one thing I, I and I know we talked about this that when you begin to talk about this with other writers and so mm -hmm. on, emphasize please that um, that if they're going to come in through the Thomason entrance, they really need to use that parking area because that would be the one uh, negative is if we start having people parking along the street uh, to to get off their bikes and ride this trail, then we may end up with some uh, pushback, if you would, from the neighborhood that we would have to deal with. So that's something I, I don't want to have to deal with at all. Can sure. You? So do what you can yeah, and, in yeah. that regard. But I think Ed, we'll we'll try to work on some some signage. I'll work I'll work with uh, yeah. these guys and Stacy. Um, you know, in terms of signage, I'd like to, I'd like to get something in the park and lot that indicates, you know, this is the trail uh, area to park and, and, and maybe we can get something posted at the beginning of the trail. So there's no confusion about riding down the, uh, the easement way down near the properties of those right. people. Um, so it may take a little, you know, it may take us a few weeks to get some signs, but we'll develop some language on them and get them up posted and try to make it clear that, um, you know, parking is, is in this parking lot, not on the street. Yep. Yeah, we, I we, think we, that's a good idea, Marty. That'll help it significantly. It'll also define where the entry is. And Exactly. Uh, so so that, I think that'll serve well. Thank yeah. you, Marty. Obviously, stick around. We got a couple more items with you. Yep. But, uh, Greg, Tim, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, look forward to uh, what you guys are going to do and create a greater opportunity for recreational activities in the town of Thompson. Thank you. Awesome. Thank Thanks you. so much, gentlemen. Yep. Have a great, have a great you. day. You're welcome. Uh, before, we, before we even move forward, uh, I'm going to ask for a motion to amend the agenda under new business. Uh, and we'll take it up right after the Nystrom's Park discussion about uh, uh, amending the agenda for the Harry, H-E-E-R-Y, running series uh, that, is, that is kind of an annual event that is being requested to take place again this year. So a motion to amend the agenda for that under new business, please. Or old business, I guess. No, that would be new business. So moved, Roger. Second, Jeff. 
Okay, thank you very much. And that'll have to come under new business. And thank you, Mark, for coming on board. I see you're here now. Mark will talk that out as well. Uh, it's really his, uh, it's his baby, so to speak. That'll be new business. I'm sorry, it, it can't, it's not old business. But regarding back to our agenda and old business, um, we kept it as an open item, Nystrom's Park Beach area discussion. Uh, Marty, I know you had some, you had to look into some issues there, whether you could get uh, lifeguards, what the situation was. I wanted to keep this open and, and, uh, and let's also talk about what if any activity level has been there. Marty? Um, yeah, so, um, so I reached out to the gentleman that I spoke to you guys about a while ago. He does not have any potential lifeguards that can come to Thomaston to replace the two that took other summer jobs when uh, we did not open the beach. He's currently, currently teaching a class, but what he indicated to me was that most of the classes that he teaches in the spring were canceled because of the pandemic, obviously. So, so there's not a lot of candidates out there. The course that he's currently running won't end for three more weeks at least. Um, so he doesn't have any certified people he could send, assuming that any of them even wanted to work in Thomaston. So um, at best, we have the one lifeguard who I reached out to about two days ago in anticipation of this meeting to ask him if he was still available to work. And uh, he did not respond. I know he was going to be on vacation into early July. I assumed he would have been back by now, but perhaps uh, early July was July 7th for him. I'm not positive. So uh, I would say in that regard, uh, lifeguards are going to be an issue. Um, secondly, we did talk about the possibility of uh, utilizing other personnel to perhaps monitor the gate, let a certain number of people in and stop that. And that that person I would have used that does maintenance at the park now. He, today was his last day. He's leaving on vacation tomorrow. Uh, and that's uh, Sal Treglia, mm -hmm. and he's he's leaving for a vacation with his family tomorrow. So uh, he's not available to do that. So in all honesty, the only people I have left that potentially were working are the two girls that continue to monitor the beach area and potentially one lifeguard, and I don't even know if he's available anymore. So okay. uh, to be honest with you, the normal course would have been in, in February, uh, Vinny would send out letters to all last year's employees, uh, asking them to indicate whether they would return or not. We'd get an answer March, uh, April 1st is usually the deadline. And then once they respond, then we would go out and look for other staff. This has been obviously an unusual year. Uh, we believe that they were going to return and in closing the beach, they, some of them went and found other summer jobs that aren't available anymore. So that's yeah. kind of where we stand. In terms of the beach itself, uh, no question the girls have called the police department multiple times. Uh, we have certainly had some rule breakers. Um, after the fence went off, it was caught in half twice um, by people who basically caught it and dropped it on the ground and went in anyway. Um, that was a little bit prior to them working. Uh, once they uh, were established there, it has gotten much better. Uh, initially, we put them at the bottom of the sidewalk near the picnic area, and uh, we had several instances where they were being, I would say, aggressively approached by people that were in their faces, uh, some of them yelling at them, you don't have the authority to keep me out, you can't stop me, that kind of thing. So with that said, we moved them into the beach area. They're now sitting in the lifeguard chair facing the picnic area but the fence that we put up is separating them from the public and things have become uh, much better after that. We have, we certainly have had to call the police uh, a few times, but it hasn't been overwhelming. I, I got to say it's been okay. Of the people I've talked to up there, um, they tend to be Thomaston residents. They're up in the park. Um, there's certainly some people disappointed that it's not open, uh, but everybody seems to understand why it's not. Um, so I haven't gotten a, a lot of backlash from Thomaston residents in terms of, I think they do understand, even if they are disappointed, I will say I have been overwhelmed with phone calls in my office from people all over 
the area, not just Thomaston, uh, asking if the beach is open. I think people are calling, looking for anything that might be open because they can't find much else. Um, so incredible, but all kinds of towns, just, I think they're just calling around looking for any, any swim area that might be open. So that's kind of a synopsis of where we are at, at this point. And, uh, I'll, I'll defer back to Ed. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, I know we had also talked about potentially if we, if we did decide to open in any way, uh, hiring, uh, someone with authority, so to speak, beyond the kids. Um, uh, so the first question that comes to mind, some places will open up and say, uh, you know, unprotected by lifeguards, you're on your own, so to speak. Um, not all do that. Um, my greater concern is not from the public at large, certainly, but it's more from Thompson residents and their desire to use the area. And that's, and that's really where my concern comes in. I don't know, Marty, if you ever evaluated how many people we could have on that beach at any one point in time and still practice some decent social distancing. Uh, I, I don't know that you ever did that, did you? I would say no. Um, generally, when Black Rock State Park is open, they take the majority of the people Right. And uh, we, we would take Thomaston residents and some carry over from there when they're full. And in addition, when the state park went to not charging and we still were charging, that definitely curbed the attendance um, a lot. So this is definitely a, a unique year. If, uh, if we do open, we, um, you know, we have Black Rock State Park being closed. So I don't know if it could be overwhelming in terms of people and um if we were going to open we would definitely have to come up with a some sense of you know i don't know if we would do it by cars that could fit in the parking lot or um you know heads that are in the cars i'm not really sure what we would use as the the measuring stick of of how we would let people in okay obviously so we have some other go ahead i'm sorry guess, i'm sorry before we go into any great discussion there let me, let me ask the selectmen what their thoughts are on this. Um, is this something you guys want to pursue? Do you want to pursue opening up the beach area in some manner? Uh, certainly, I think there are details that could be worked out to, to, to make it happen if we chose to do that. Um, is that something you guys are interested in pursuing, or should we simply end this conversation? Roger. I Personally, I'm not in favor of it, and opening it without having a lifeguard there, you know, the social distancing. Um, I prefer not to have it open until we have a lifeguard, if we have Jeff? a lifeguard. I'm not particularly comfortable not having a lifeguard either. I think if we had one and we had, you know, limited hours that, you know, swimming is, a, is allowed with a lifeguard, then, you know, that may be something and, you know, you, you make it very clear that the lifeguard is on duty or lifeguard is off duty. When the lifeguard leaves at the end of their shift, they leave, they call everybody out of the water and say lifeguard is off duty and they leave and people do as they wish. I think that's where they do it a lot of, a, a lot of parks. Uh, but my bigger concern is, you know, the distancing there. When you look at outdoor events, they want to, you know, you basically draw in circles and you need a 15 feet separation between um, blankets or, or, you know, areas where people are going to That's, be. That is, what is, that is what is advised, absolutely. So, you know, I would want to see that as well. Um, and then my third thing is if we were to do this, I don't want to open it up to uh, just the masses to come in. I think in this time of uh, pandemic and the state giving us some latitude, we may want to consider if, if we're doing it at all to consider having it for just town residents. Um, and if that includes Litchfield and Northfield, because, you know, they own part of it, then so be it. But, you know, ha you know, that way it's a very limited audience that could come in there. Those, well, those are the three thoughts that I have. And that, you know, listen, can, um, Roger, Roger. Okay. can we just restrict it, Thomas and Northfield? Because we've now had state money involved there. So we can't just say 
Thomas in Northville only. Listen, that is that is absolutely true. However, um, my thought is is we might get some latitude as well under these extreme circumstances. Um, you know, that is that is something I'd be willing to test anyway to be candid. I didn't want to say that in this format, but I did. Um, the, the yeah, I, I think if we could get that concession, it makes it a lot easier to make this this decision. If we have it wide open, we know no, what's probably going to be that happen. So no, I that's agree. We would have to we would have to do several things. First of all, and this is why I asked Marty, how many people could we put on that beach in some sort of safe manner? We would need to change the protocol to take it from having them the kids. We'd have to have somebody at the gate. And they'll speak to the person, to whoever at the gate would only allow in so many cars. Okay, there it'd be difficult to ask them to do a head count, but you know, okay, so we can let in. And I'm, I'm, I'm just playing with numbers here now. We could let in ten cars for the beach. Okay, and after that, no more beach allowed until somebody leaves. Somebody comes in with a, with a with a tennis racket or wants to come and picnic because they got their picnic tape baskets. Fine, that's another issue, you know. And you let those folks in, but you limit the number of people to the beach with the concept that there's understanding that there are no lifeguards here to protect. There are town beaches that do that now. Uh, that they just tell you they put up a sign: we have no lifeguards. You're in a sense you're on your own. You know, does does that, you know, to what extent does that waive your liability? I don't know. That's a question, I guess. But, you know, at least you let people know. Uh, it, it's, again, there are ways to do it if we want to do it. The question really at hand is, is do we really want to do it? I could make a point to it. In fact, I mentioned to you uh, earlier, late Saturday afternoon on the way home, I drove into that lower parking lot there by the lake. There's only a handful of cars there. Uh, one had a New Jersey plate. There was five others with New York plates and no Connecticut plates at all. That was it. So you're getting a lot of people from out of state coming up there. That's why if, if we were to do this, I think we definitely have to look at residents uh, only. For, for yeah, residents, us in Northfield, Lichfield, right, right. But so, there's no so to, to enforce it either, so. Well, I, I think you have to show proof of residency or- There you go. Uh, when, when you come in. Show us your driver's license. But if we have no one here to call them on it. Well, we would still have the um, the girls, uh, you know, at, at the gate or at, at the beach, you know, monitoring to make sure that there's safe social distancing and that there's only so many people allowed into that. Well, if we got somebody to monitor, but when I went to Saturday, there was no one there monitoring. Of course, um, it was July 4th, too. But. No, actually, I drove through on Saturday, and I, there were uh, two girls down on the, on the lifeguard bench. Well, they weren't there. Yeah, yeah, they were down there until 8 o'clock at, at night on July 4th. Yep. Now, Roger, they're, they're in the lifeguard here on the beach. I don't know. Unless you walk down there, you may have not have seen that. I don't know if you did go down or you did well, or just drove through. If they had a car, it, no, nothing would have connected a plate was parked there in the parking lot. Oh, no, well, really? I got to be honest with you. So, so, some of these people get rides to work. Okay. All right. You, you know what I mean? So, so, the, some of them are just girls. They share cars with their moms and things like that. Right. So it's not uncommon for them to be dropped off. Okay. All right. We're, uh, we're, we're kind of, we're, 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 hap we're fairly well into the season. I guess the question at hand here is because Marty would have to do more work if, if we're going to give him a go ahead to, to or if we were interested in opening it up, you know. Well, I again, don't mind. I, I don't mind that. that. I, if it made if it made Thomaston people happy and had an opportunity, I would do anything to make that happen for them. But if we're doing it and we're basically overwhelmed with non-residents, yes, there's a tremendous amount of work, and I don't really think that we're serving the town of Thomaston as as much as we are non-residents. And in this now, situation, if, Marty, I'm not I'm not opposed to, to saying you know, it, identification. Uh, you know, I, again, the, I'm fine the, with the that. Question goes, the question goes to um, can 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 the girls monitor the gate? Is that possible for them to do that? Do you need well, additional I, personnel to do this? 
Well, I believe that they can do it. I know it's, it, this is going to sound kind of ironic, but in speaking with both of them, yeah. because of the situation in the state, they have no plans to do anything. There are no family vacations planned. There, mm-hmm. There's nothing. So normally they need multiple weeks off. It would be, it would be like a, a, a tough scheduling problem. Mm-hmm. But I got to be honest with you, in this instance, they're, they're working from eight in the morning until eight o'clock at night, just splitting the shifts, the two of them. It probably would not be that hard to get them to do the same thing. One at the gate. And I One. guess, I guess here, here's the other thing I, I, I would throw out there. Um, normally one of them would be collecting money. Um, if, if we decide, you know, we want to do something for the townspeople and let's say we're, we're already weeks into the beach season. The, the yeah. money is, is not, it's not a tremendous amount of income. Anyway, if we decided to open up for Thomaston residents and it was free to use this year, then I basically have two girls that can split the hours at the gate. If we want to still collect money, then one of them's got to sit down and collect the money and one of them's got to work the gate. And that gate is going to have to be worked pretty much all the way to closing. Absolutely. So, you know, we, we, we can't send them home at four o'clock and say, that's the end of the day, because after four o'clock, there'll be people lined up on the street going in there. So no this point. is going to have to be a, you know, a very, listen, normally, uh, Guys, the, the the lifeguard would go home at six o'clock. The gate people would go home at four. I have them there till eight o'clock at night, keeping people out of the water, because right. the second they leave, they'll, they'll they'll storm the fence. It looks like Normandy going on. Mm-hmm. So it's it's it, it that's what we're dealing with here. So if we're going to do it, we got to do it all the way to the end of the day. The park is supposed to close at eight thirty. Um, that is the town ordinance. They probably right. would have to work till eight, eight o'clock at night. And if that's what you want to do, I, I, I'll get the job done for you. Hey, Martin, There's no problem you, with that. Wouldn't you think though, that if you were, if we were to do this and you know, it's just Thomas and residents that are allowed in and whatnot, that if you did stop at seven or seven thirty. It's not like people are going to be rushing from out of town into Thomas to jump into nice rooms really quick before sunset. Is it? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Jeff. I mean, you're, you're right about that. Uh, so I think if we limit what happens throughout the day, it affects how, you know, what happens, you know, at the end yep. of the day, too. Um, I, I, I can, I'm willing to make a motion, if you'd like, to that we, Please, uh, that we would open Vistrums on a limited basis. That would include uh, Thomason re- residents only, and you can change that. Thomason, Litchfield, Northfield. Thomason, Litchfield, Northfield, then. Um, and that um, we would, unless we can get a lifeguard, we would post uh, no lifeguard on duty, and that we would continue to do monitoring with the employees that we have. And also that we will review this again um, at our next Board of Select. Okay. Roger. Oh, I'm not in favor of that. Okay. Uh, uh, well, uh, I, the, so the mo- let me just be clear. The motion is we open to Thomason, <clears throat> Litchfield, Northfield residents, the beach area that we post no, that we post a no unprotected beach sign, uh, no lifeguard on duty. Uh, we do not charge someone monitors the gate and allows only a certain amount of people to be determined by, or a certain amount of cars for the beach to be determined by Marty. Uh, and uh, and we charge no fee. And if I'm being redundant, I'm sorry about that. Is that the motion essentially, Jeff? Yes. Okay. Uh, you still are have no feelings on that, Roger? Or, all right, I'll tell you what, I'll it, second the motion. Opening the beach without a lifeguard, it, 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 I, I'm not in favor of doing that. I oppose it. Okay. So, uh, Marty, is you're saying that you're waiting to hear from a lifeguard? Is there any other options? Do you feel, as far as getting lifeguards, you know, posting job postings or anything, or is that just? Uh, I I have to say it probably is minimal. You know, normally, Jeff, we would you know you run an ad in the paper, 
human resources would put it on a Connecticut labor department. There's some things that would have been done well in advance of needing an employee as opposed to needing one tomorrow. So yes, I think it's thin. I do think if the one kid that we had, and frankly, he's a guy at this point, he's graduate high school. He's 19 years old. He's been here for years. He's a great lifeguard. Um, If he comes through, he's already missed several weeks of work. I wouldn't be surprised if he would take every hour I could give him. Um, however, that's not the best policy for lifeguards. There is uh, generally a guide for hours in terms of them before they basically get highway hypnosis after a while, and they're not counting heads anymore. So generally, you don't put lifeguards on eight- and ten-hour schedules. Um, it's it's too tedious to do. They're, they're meant to be done in short stints with multiple days. But I will say this, having a lifeguard is better than having no lifeguard. Well, I'm just, you know, I, I find it surprising that there's a shortage of lifeguards this year when so many places are closed. That's why I'm wondering. I, I, if, would, if, I if, would agree with you, but the same, the same thing happened to the other two that I had. They actually went and found different jobs for the summer. Yeah. They weren't willing to wait around for a lifeguarding job because they didn't think one was ever coming. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm thinking, you know, if, if we even get it out on the times when people speak in various Facebook, social medias, um, you know, Trish Brody, you know, runs Black Rock State Park. Where are her lifeguards this year? There's got to be some people out there interested in picking up, um, you know, even part time work. Yeah, I, I agree, Jeff. Um, no question. Definitely could be possibilities. But the problem is when you can't tell anybody whether it's opening and if it is what the date's going to be, it's it's difficult to line people up. If you guys decide tonight you, you want to open it up and there's a date involved, I can be more aggressive, but it's very hard to hire people for a job that doesn't exist on a date that doesn't exist. So if you guys make a move tonight on doing something, then I can be much more aggressive about reaching out to people. But it's hard to hire people at a job that really – doesn't exist. I mean, it was very possible tonight. You guys may have said we're not going to open it for the summer. That so, it could. This conversation could have went that direction too. So, Roger, um, question for you: If in the past we've had a lifeguard on duty until five, six o'clock at night, um, and I assume they start somewhere around eight o'clock in the morning, um, and then we have a you know no lifeguard on duty for other times that they're there. What type of hours would you be comfortable with having a lifeguard there and not having them there? Whenever the beach is open, they have a lifeguard. If the lifeguard's not there, we close the beach. But, but, it, it, but what I'm saying is in past years, the beach has been open without a lifeguard because the lifeguard goes home before the park closes. Not, not only that, let me, if, if I may just interject, and please, Marty, you, you chime in on this. Yes. I do not believe that there has ever been, a, or I won't say has ever, at least in recently, there has not been lifeguard there seven days a week. They're only there certain days a week. Please, Marty, illuminate. Um, I, I would say this. I, I know what you're getting at. They are there seven days a week. Oh, they are. Excuse um, me, I was but the, but the But the hours, but at the hours are not every hour that the park opens. So let me give you this, for example, on Saturday and Sunday, um, the police department generally open the gates about 630 in the morning. That's their normal run. It is very common to get there at seven in the morning and find 30 people there with all the picnic tables and people in the water. The lifeguards generally don't report to work on Saturday and Sunday until eight o'clock. During the week, it's even later. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we do 10 o'clock. Thursday, Friday, we do 9. And they all go home between 5 and 6, depending on the day. So there are periods in the morning where there is no lifeguard. And there are always periods in the evening between 5, 6, 7, 8 o'clock where there are no lifeguards. If we were going to do that, we would have to double the budget of the staff at Nystrom's by far. And years ago, it used to be $20,000 for the people up there that was caught a decade ago to 10,000. And that's what we've been living on ever since. So that's kind of where there are definitely periods where there are no lifeguards there. Um, no question about it. Um, 
Back so to your conversation. I, I would have to, uh, I agree with Roger. If we can't have any lifeguards, uh, I think it's, it's somewhat reckless on our part to go ahead and just open it up and allow, you know, especially in the peak of the day, a lot of people in there swimming without monitoring. Um, but I, if we, if we can get some sort of coverage for lifeguards, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm feeling comfortable. Not necessarily, but not necessarily all the time that it's open. Something. Yeah, I, th I just think if we do that, you know, you want to have it there during the peak hours, if possible, and also just have it, uh, you know, very, very clearly marked. And when the lifeguard goes off duty, call everybody out of the water and say, I am now off duty. Everybody's responsible for their own, you know, um, well-being and, you know, they leave and there's signs up when there's, there's no lifeguard on duty. It's very clear. There's no lifeguard on duty. Um, I yeah, think and I would say, Jeff, that's that's happen. generally how the hours are staggered is for the bulk of the day. So that's why they're generally there from nine to five, <laughs> ten to six. You know, generally people start, you know, uh, heading out six, seven o'clock at night. They're winding down. They're heading home. That kind of thing. We try to hit the busiest parts of the day, which is going to be, you know, eleven to five o'clock. That type of thing. So that's why they're kind of staggered. Not so early in the morning. Not so late at night. We try to do the best that we can with the funds that we have um, to spread out over over that eight week period or whatever it roughly is. All right. Uh, so how do we want to? How do we want to? First of all, let's let's do one thing, Jeff. It seems like there's some controversy with all of this. If you would rescind your motion, no, so rescind. rescinded. Okay, and I res I'll rescind my second. So the motion is off the table. Do we want to instruct Marty, uh, say, give him, uh, I don't know, pick a date, Marty, uh, uh, I don't know, a week out from now to see if you could get lifeguards? And if so, uh, then come back to us. We could even have a very brief special meeting to talk about it and see where we are. Is that something that we, is, we would agree to, all of us? I would be in favor of that if he has lifeguards, sure. Okay, understanding they may not be 24-7, Roger. Well, let's see what he has to offer. Okay. Jeffrey? Yeah, uh, but again, seeing what he has to offer, I think that ties his hands a little bit because, you know, if he does get a lifeguard, we should, you know, <laughs> you got to grab him and hire him. So if, if he can get a lifeguard, I want to be able to say, if he get a, a lifeguard, there will be hours for him to work. Um, and and keep him employed, and you know, does that like do lifeguards get paid differently than um, the uh, gatekeepers? That's Marty. Um, it kind of depends. Um, the 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 girls that are the gatekeepers have been there. One of them has been there several years now, um, so she gets paid significantly more than than the other one. Um, it's the same as the lifeguards. Generally, if you come back another year, there's a pay increase involved. So the one guy that I'm hoping will come back gets significantly more than the other two that worked last year and that also would have worked this year. So it's sort of a graded scale. Uh, if you return, there's an increase each year, that type of thing. So, that, I mean, if, but, you were to, if you were to find some lifeguards and hire them, there's, there's probably, even if for some reason, you know, things go sideways with having – the actual swimming allowed, we could still provide them work as far as being, you know, doing other types of work there, like monitoring. Yeah, yeah, I said that's very possible. Um, you know, we could also consider the possibility, Jeff, that since we've missed a portion of the swimming season that employees would have been getting paid, we actually have the ability to pay more than we might normally pay to entice somebody to work here. Um, that's not you know, generally lifeguards don't get a lot more than minimum wage, despite the responsibility, but that's about the going rate. But since we haven't paid anyone in June, um, I, you know, we could consider an increased uh, wage to entice somebody from another park or somebody that didn't get a job this summer to come and work at several more dollars an hour than they would have made anywhere else. Um, can certainly use that as an enticement. So, that, so if that, you guys, uh, I'll say this, if you guys are open to the idea of opening up the beach and, and I know that you're open to the possibility and you 
if you can buy me five days, um, I'll do everything I can to find people. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do whatever I can. I, and I'll I come back to you. I think that's a perfect scenario, Marty. Uh, I, I will make the motion. Back. I'll make a motion to uh, uh, instruct Marty to proceed with finding employees to adequately staff Nystrom's to prepare for opening the beach and that we should address this again as soon as uh, he, he has developments on this. You say adequate staff for seven days of the week? For seven us? days of the week. I will, I will find, I will find somebody for every day of the week for as many hours as I can find Roger, if that makes you feel more comfortable. And then the hours are not there. What happens then? And then it would be posted no lifeguard on duty. And that's pretty common in most swim areas. And that's, um, and that's, that's what it's been for years. What, what if, what if we were able to find lifeguards fully manned it for say five days a week, I'll just say the number of five days. The other two days, the beach will be closed all day long. So, and uh, I, I have no problem with that either. If that's the decision of the board and you want to open the, if, if we have limited hours and we need to spread them from Thursday through Sunday uh, and well, the yeah, beach is closed month, Monday through Wednesday, um, I, I will say this, if you're, if you're willing to go, um, resident only type thing. I, I definitely think it makes this whole situation a lot easier. Uh, there's no question. Um, there will be a lot less people to monitor. Um, so if that's the route that you decide to go and, and we want to check IDs at the gate, it certainly makes the situation a lot easier than it would be any other way. That is the way it, we the, would go with it, Marty, if it happens. Uh, yeah. We have to limit so, so the amount of people. So imagine the idea, Roger, if, uh, yeah. So imagine the idea, Roger, if, if we didn't have lifeguards, let's say it was later in the evening and we didn't have any lifeguards, but it was, um, a, a, a Thomaston residency type thing. We would have much less people there. All we would need is one person to monitor the gate. If we don't have a lifeguard, um, you're just going to talk about some families from Thomaston going up in the evening probably going to picnic, a few small kids in the water, uh, probably easy to deal with. If we open it up to half the state of Connecticut, it becomes extremely difficult situation to monitor with every other place that's closed. Well, I, I would love to see just Thompson and residents, but I can, can legally uh, do something that's illegal. I, I think Roger, we, Roger, we may run around. into that problem, but I'd say let it happen. And if so, then we'll have to act upon it. And then in which case we would just be required to close it down. But, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, you, I, I'm basically, uh, I hate to do it in this manner. Hopefully <laughs> somebody doesn't pick up on it all because I, so I'm saying challenge us. And I'd say, and I'd go back at the state and say, under the extreme circumstances that we have, we're trying to do the best we can for our residents. I, I think the governor has indicated that they're giving us a lot of leeway in this in this year because of the problems that we have. I, I think we could circumvent it if needed. Yeah. I wouldn't well, advocate for it on an annual basis, but certainly under these extreme circumstances, I would. Well, let's, let's see what Marty can do as far as exactly. getting cards. We'll go from there. Exactly. So Marty, Marty, second yeah. then, Roger? Yeah, yeah give me a few seconds. days and then I'll reach out to you guys via email like I do, and I'll let you know what progress I, I could make by the end of the week. Uh, if we can make some progress, you know, maybe we can, uh, you know, by next Monday, if you, if, if you guys want to have a special meeting Monday night and I'll, uh, you know, I can, I'll indicate to you earlier where I am. And then if you got, want to have a meeting, let's say Monday night next week, a quick one, uh, emergency meeting, and I'll, you know, we can formally do it. You guys say, take the fences down. This is going to be the game plan and, you know, let's give it a shot. Okay. Sounds good. I got a motion and that's your second, Roger. Yes? Yes. Okay, so I got a motion and a second. Um, to be clear, the motion is to, to uh, indicate to Marty to move forward to try to make it possible to create swimming for Thomaston, Northfield, Litchfield residents only at Nice and Park, seeking the appropriate staffing levels. Uh, we will reconvene to make any further decision 
specifically. I have a motion and a second to that effect. Edmond, aye. Roger, aye. Jeff Dunn, aye. Very good. Thank and you. Uh, Marty, get Jeff. back to me after you've done something. Let me know. I do, it does have to be a special meeting, can't be an emergency meeting. Uh, so I would just need uh, 24 hours notice uh, in order to have a meeting. Okay. No and, problem. Uh, no problem. Actually, Marty, um, I don't, I, I'm not sure what kind of contact you have with Litchfield, but if, do they have any, um, uh, you know, lifeguards or access to lifeguards with their areas there that maybe they could help us find staffing since we are actually helping their residents as well. See if maybe yeah, well, that, well, that certainly would, would be part of my thing job. I'll reach out to all of our neighbors, um, anybody that I can, but what I haven't had to this point was the idea that the town wanted to open up the beach area. So this gives me a little bit of leeway to actually say, if I can find people, you have a job. I haven't really been able to do that with people to this point. Um, I wasn't sure the town was going to open up the, the beach area. So now I have a little better direction where we're trying to go. Yep. Okay, good. Good. Thanks, Marty. Good. Marty, we can also meet during the day. You don't have to have a meeting at night. Uh, no, absolutely. We, we I, can meet I'll anytime. Meet. We can sure, meet any time at a special meeting. I just need 24 yep. hours to notice it. And, uh, Marty, are you leaving the meeting now or are you staying? No, he's got more. Uh, I, th I think I have another item. Okay. Yes, he does. Right. Thank you. So, what are you going to uh, miss me if I leave? Yes. <laughs> With I, that said, we're question, moving I don't want to hold Mark up either. So. No, and we're moving right on to that next. With that said, we're moving on to new business. Uh, uh, and the first order of business is one we amended the agenda for, and that would be the uh, Harry, Harry, I believe. Am I saying it right, Mark? Harry? Yeah, it's after Joan Harry. Harry. Okay. So Mark, is, this is a running series that Mark has run annually here in town. And uh, one of our concerns was, is again, uh, you know, how do, how do we do this and, and do this with some sort of distancing? Uh, I, Mark did send us something that I've sent out to you guys today, uh, a letter talking about how we could go about it, uh, sending people off in different groups instead of having everybody congregate up at one at a time, send them off every so many seconds so we can still record their times, you know, that kind of thing. Um, uh, Mark, you want to talk about it just a little bit? Sure. We, you know, we've been doing it. We generally don't have that many, you know, when you look at uh, a low week would be about 25. Usually we don't have much more than 45. Um, and the whole road is, you know, it's, it, they get spread out over the two, 2.2 miles. So there's, there's a lot of distancing anyway, but the, what I think my big concern would be at the start, um, that it is basically 25 to 45 people all standing in the road together, uh, waiting to start running. Um, but we could do things like I, I, I mentioned in the, in my email, like they do it a triathlon. We start, start them in waves. And they do that because the overcrowding in the water, you know, could end up in drowning. So they're, they're too close together. So we could, we could do that. Um, I could chalk out a whole bunch of boxes and say, you know, stay, stay here until, uh, um, until. Yeah. Until your, until your group is called. Right. So uh, as it is, the groups is there is, you know, when I say 25 to 45 people, it's, they're, they're all related to each other almost, you, you know, there's like eight Johnstons and uh, the uh, Donofrio family and is extended and, you know, there's, there's probably 12 of them and it, it, they're, you know, there's a lot of relatives. So it's, it's, if you look at groups that are already with each other, it's, it's less than it even sounds. So, so Mark, I read your um, your outline, and it sounds good to me. Um, you know, always um, going on the side of caution. Maybe you know, having some signs encouraging them to you know continue social distancing while running to you know, not you know necessarily side by side or in front of each other. Um, I think any of those kind of things would help. But I'm not really sure how you'd really stop people from going out running anyways. It's just the fact that you do it in kind of a group mentality, but, you know. Yeah, 
I, I, they don't really I run in. They, they often have like a running partner, but they don't really run in groups. When they come across at the end, it, it really, they are really quite spaced out. Um, and that, that I really don't see as a problem at all. Um, as once, once they get out of that first quarter mile or so where they're kind of clumped up, um, I do, I do run a Facebook page and I can put announcements to remind them to social distance and, uh, and, and be aware, you know, I could say, you know, if, if we can't do it, then we're not going to, and we would do, we just won't have the series if, yeah. if you can't yeah. abide by, you know, the social distancing yeah. protocol. So. I, and I, can, I, I, I was a runner in my, person wearing a mask while they're running, you know, can't they, do uh, that. But, no. but, you know, if we just ask people, hey, you know, while you're waiting in areas to, you know, respect the masks and the distancing, I, I think that'll be fine. I'm not sure. sure there's anything that we even need to motion on at this point. There's nothing restricting them from doing it now. Is there well, anything? actually, what Mark is seeking is our, our, if you want to make a motion or not. Uh, uh, but what he's really seeking is, is our uh, blessing, so to speak, to do this running series. Uh, because it always congregates at the park, okay, at Nystrom's Park, and uh, and I what I what I think is Mark is is that if you could essentially break them up into groups, heats so to speak, you know, and call them off, say okay, you're heat one, you're heat two, you're heat three, and give them give them groups and tell them you know just you know maybe to Jeff's point, wear a mask while you're hanging around in a parking lot. But once you're getting yep. ready to run, obviously take that mask off. Nobody can run with a mask on. And to address your concerns, Jeff, I was a runner in my younger day. Everybody runs at their own pace. Right. You know, so yeah, you are going to get, you might get close to somebody at some point. You're going to pass somebody. Somebody's going to pass you. But nobody's kind of hanging together. Everybody so, so, runs their own pace. You know, park, in, you're, when you're meeting in a parking lot, getting ready to run, why not have them line up on that sidewalk going up past the tennis courts and spread them out that way? So then when you start to run out to the road, you're already pretty ready to go. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. You all the way over by the tennis courts? Well, they're gonna they're gonna be in a parking lot by the, by Nitro's pond, right? Yeah. So instead of having 25 or 35, 40 people in a bunch right there, as they can have them spread out following up that sidewalk going up towards the upper level. So yeah, so when I, I could do run, that. Spaced out. That is, I could do that. That is uh, actually quite a long way away. Um, so it would be hard for them to get communicated to, but I can certainly spread them out even, even, you know, in, in, in shouting distance from the start of the race without, without a problem. Okay. Mark, All right. do, you, Mark, do you typically uh, get some sort of permit to do this or is it uh, just kind of, no. yeah. All right. So no, it was just a place to congregate to run every year. So right. I think I think the the key element again, I think, in my opinion, Mark, is that while they're hanging in the parking lot, have them wear masks, okay, uh, yeah. and then send them off in heats, you know, or waves, as you mentioned it, uh, and and I think that's sufficient, you know. Yep. Yeah, okay. Agree. And uh, that's. Sounds great. I was, yeah, just use your own judgment. And it should be good judgment too. So, in lieu of a motion, can we just ask that the minutes of this meeting reflect that we are in we are in agreement with Mark to uh, continue with this event, the Harry Running Series, as we have just recently oh, yeah, we have just discussed. Rogers in favor of it. Okay, we're all in, we're all in favor. Yep. So the minutes will reflect such, Mark. Um, you get, you wanted to get going this Saturday, do so. Okay, get it up on your Facebook yep. page. To that point, say, look, social distance when gathering prior to running, wear your mask prior to running. Uh, I'll send you off in waves or heats or whatever, however you want to term it to them. And, uh, and uh, you know, obviously once they're running, because they'll say, you want me to run with my mask on? Hell no. But, you know, while you're hanging around, uh, you know, getting ready to go, respect that and do some social distancing for everybody's safety and health. Okay, fair enough. Very good, Thanks very good. Thank, Thank you very you much, much, guys. You're Thank welcome. You. Have a great Rick. day. Good run you on too. Saturday. All right. I wish I was young enough to join, or I, I should say, I wish my knees were young enough to join. <laughs> I was gonna say, Ed, you're, you're, you're never too old. You're never too old.
Oh, yeah. Except for, except for the knees. <laughs> oh, it is true. Trust me. A vigorous yeah. walk is good now. <laughs> that's, that's, well, we do that at Hiri too. So yeah. if ever you want to join us. <laughs> All Take right. Take care, Mark. Have a great Thank evening. Thank you. Have a good Thank night, you. guys. Uh, other item of new business that was part of the regular meeting, and that's reopening of public meetings. Marty, we're all set, Marty, if you want to check out. Okay, thank you. I appreciate your time tonight. I did just want to ask Marty a question. It's, it's not on the agenda. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just uh, curious, because uh, we did talk about Little League, I think, at our last meeting or something, or we were hearing about them going. Is, yeah. is it true that the season is not going to go forward as planned? Uh, that is a true story. They uh, they extended their registrations out to June 30th to uh, try to get enough kids to play, and it did not get off the ground in either the girls' softball or the boys' baseball at all, with the exception of one team, which they call a juniors division, which actually plays at Thomaston High School. And they are going to start this Friday night down there with practice. But that is the one and only Little League team that currently exists. They canceled their season. Uh, Tiny Galpin, who's the president of the league, basically said most of the parents were just uncomfortable with their kids playing, and they just couldn't get it, couldn't get enough to, uh, kids together to do it. Yeah, I have to he does have some other. He does have some other recreational activities taking place. So, uh, what what were they, uh, Marty? Soccer and yeah, golf. we do we do the the, the soccer under uh, uh, under some pretty strict guidance themselves. Uh, CJSA has started some summer soccer. Um, they're going to be at Sanford Avenue almost every night um, starting this week, but. Uh, Kids can't kick balls to each other. Um, they basically have one ball each. They they oh, it's it's more drills. They can't play games. They can't do that. So that's the current phase of soccer, if you will. Um, so they are going to be out there. Uh, we have three baseball teams at the high school that are going to be playing down there. Francine uh, released uh, that area of town uh, a week ago or so. So those kids are going to be able to start playing. Um, I have a girls softball team at Highwood playing Tuesday night, but it's very scattered. Um, but some kids are, are starting to get out there. There are some, uh, some things running. Um, it's a start. It's not a lot, but uh, it's definitely a start. On the high school level, uh, amazingly, CIAC had kids that were supposed to start on July 6th to be all conditioning outside for uh, fall sports and they actually canceled that they backed it off at least 30 more days now so um, now that's not normal usually fall sports would start on about august 25th they had extended it this year because they felt kids hadn't been working out doing their things at school practicing for a period of time so they tried to extend it and based on uh, what's happening around the country they uh, they backed it off and, and ended it. So no high school sports. Kids can be out there doing anything at this point in terms of uh, organized school events. Anyway, that's the best I could say. Certainly welcome to go out and do their own thing. And what is the status of our playgrounds right now? They're open. The playgrounds are, are back open. It asked me to uh, reopen them about maybe two weeks ago or so. Correct. So, uh, and based on his recommendation, we opened the bag up. We posted signs at Nystrom's Reeves that uh, the public should know that they are not being sanitized, um, using them at their own risk. Uh, gloves are recommended, not required, but at least recommended. Um, so they are back open. I see a lot of kids at Nystrom's using the playground equipment again. And so I brought in a good number of parents uh, up in that neighborhood that are pretty darn excited about that and their kids are happier than the parents Does that include so black rock uh school? yeah the black rock school is closed oh. and uh but francine honestly indicated to me i talked to her a few days ago the playground is closed almost at this point for safety repairs okay. more than it really is anything to do with COVID 19 um they the town has put some money forward to do some repairs there and I don't think she wants it open until those are completed, is what she indicated to me. Not really a COVID-19 thing at all. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Marty. Thank you. Have a good evening, Thanks, Marty. Guys.
Okay, um, I had had a, a conversation with Francine about about the playground there as well, and and uh, I knew that there were some safety issues there, and we have dedicated funds to it. So it was even my suggestion when we had a discussion about it just to keep that one closed. But our public, ours and our parks are in good condition; they're all relatively new. So uh, it was the desire of some parents and with parents with young children, they're there, they're watching them. You know, I, 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 yeah, I you know, I, no need to tell a parent how to take care of their child. Yeah, I just wanted to understand that I had a few questions from people, so. On, yeah, so. So, okay. Okay, moving along to new business. Uh, it would be reopening of public meetings. Um, Based on based on the size of some of our rooms, uh, I think I think that we are probably or not probably we are capable of having public meetings again. Uh, certainly, in terms of board of selectmen, board of finance, and so on and so forth. Uh, in fact, for the board of selectmen and most town meetings, I would think we could easily use Lena Morton. Lena Morton has the capacity to seat 112 people. That's uh, per fire marshal. And six uh, feet apart? No, no, no. I'm saying in totality. So even if you broke it down to 50% capacity, you're at what, 56? If you go less than that, you're still at, uh, if you needed to go only 25, you're still at uh, what, 26? Is that where we are? Or 23, uh, no, 25, 28, excuse me. Uh, certainly, most, most public meetings do not have come anywhere near that. Um, so I think it's possible for us to begin to open up with certainly regarding the board of selectmen, should there be a need with Jeff Dunn present, if we ever had an overflow and needed to bring it up to the opera house, there would be no difficulty at all walking you get upstairs where the overall capacity of that, I believe is 489, I think Jeff even said more uh, but you know that's maybe just the orchestra area. Yeah. So and, it's, yeah. If if you had if it's based on the calculations I looked at, it's like 120 and 28 that you could do uh, with the um, square footage that they're requiring. Um, and you know, I'll just say this. I mean, I, I'm I, I live in town. I'm in you know in work a lot. So it, it, whether it's a selectman's meeting or anything else, I can make the facility available. We're not having it. There's no other activities going on right now other than cleaning and stuff like that. So um, uh, I can make it readily available. That's good. And, and we also have the ability, um, especially in the in the theater, because we have a high def closed circuit camera for the stage and streaming abilities, we can stream the meeting live. In as, and if not that, we can definitely record it and make it available the way we're doing these others. So um, that's always an opportunity if you have big crowds where you're exceeding that hundred. So uh, at any rate, we have the opportunities to go live with our meetings again. Uh, I say, I think certainly with the ability to utilize the Opera House, even planning and zoning with public hearings, we'd be able to have a live space, plenty of room for everybody's social distance. Um, you know, this way here, people can get back to some sense of normalcy here. Um, and you'd be off the hook, well, not with planning and zoning, but all the rest of us anyways, for having meetings. Um, so, uh, gentlemen, if you're, if there, there is only one other consideration here, and I don't think it's a major one. But uh, as we open for town meetings or town oriented go governmental meetings, we're bound to start to get requests also from condo groups and so on and so forth who will always use our facilities. And um, they're never large meetings either. And uh, we would begin to facilitate those as well upon the request if, if everybody is in agreement. Are we in agreement? So we got to consider about sanitizing to it. Yeah. What, uh, I I assume we have some sort of protocol in place, but if um, you know outside organizations are coming in, you know um, that they would have to adhere to, you know, the face wearing policies, hand sanitizing, spacing, 
all those kind of things. And then we have to make sure that if it's on the schedule, the person doing the cleaning is either doing it immediately following the meeting or uh, the next day before anyone else uses that, that room that it's been sanitized. Well, I guess, I guess that's an additional um, consideration. Certainly regarding anybody coming into town hall would have to respect the same guidelines that we currently have in place for town hall usage. And that's mask, you know, uh, hand sanitizer, uh, social distancing, and so on, all right? That would be absolutely expected. Um, regarding the sanitizing of the areas after the fact, that, that does kind of present a bit of a problem. Um, is there not, um, so nobody's here presently, or maybe you know more about it than me, Jack, is there not a time period wherein if a space is no longer utilized, it is then basically clean? Yeah, there's not a, I'm sure there's figures out there and I've heard different ones, um, but <laughs> You know, I'd rather err on the side of caution anyways. And, you know, if uh, we have a mister or something, you know, that we can just spray down the room. I know uh, we're looking to get a uh, handheld mister for the uh, theater. You know, if it, that can be used throughout the town hall. If it, I think the library and the schools are looking to get them as well. Um, it's just a precautionary measure, which would take all five minutes maybe, but it should be done. I think mm -hmm. the other thing we, we, we want to do, especially with outside groups coming in, um, we should have a, a, a sign-in um, list for it, all meetings so that, you know, if, if there is some sort of exposure ever that we have that contact tracing, we know who, who's at the meeting so we can notify them, you know, you may be exposed. Understood. Understood. Uh, with, I, with, I would be in favor of going having outside meetings. open meetings. But first, just uh, keeping it just for the town departments and don't open it up to other outside organizations. Let's let's try it this way first. With Through governmental August, meetings, maybe. excuse me. Let me just finish. With governmental meetings, it's easy to know who's there because whoever is present name is in the minutes. Okay. Right. Uh, so that that's that's easy. That's easy. Those names will be there. Uh, I just I, many many groups again. I use our facility in half per year. And they aren't large groups, you know, but there are groups that come in, um, and I just know that we're going to get requests in that regard. To, to just kind of follow up on that just a little bit. We also have groups such as ten to one artists who have not been able to utilize facilities all these times as well that may want to start up again. Um, how do we respond to all of them? Do we not, should we no longer, do we continue to not permit any of that? So uh, I, or do we simply make sure we practice the right procedures, i.e. social distancing, masks, hand sanitizer, that type of thing? And I'd like to suggest uh, that we open up for our town government meetings only for right now and that uh, for the, let's, the next couple of weeks, let's see how that goes. And in the meantime, you know, I think if FACT or the 10th one artist or anyone else is interested in starting up, that they should notify us uh, in writing so that the, the selectmen can, can kind of look at it on a case by case basis. And then maybe uh, one month from now, we could open it up to other organizations doing meetings because anyone scheduling a meeting won't be doing it in the next two weeks anyways, I want to think. Jeff, can you make that a motion? That is a motion. I'll second that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and in fact, what we can do is we can, if, if other groups begin to request, we can take this up at our next motion, as well, our next meeting, yeah, which is in yeah. two weeks as well. Uh, so uh, yeah. we, that'll be I an open just, agenda item for us on our next meeting. If um, I could just make one. Please do, Stacy. Sure. Um, Trust me, nobody's jumping for glee higher than, than I am right now at this moment. Um, my only thought is just to put it out there to you that on the planners list, sir, there's been a lot of talk about reopening for public hearings and, and public meetings, et cetera. And Lena Morton, I agree, is perfect for the, for the task, but there has been some discussion about what about those who are not comfortable yet coming out to public meetings. 
and are they somehow being shut out from for FOI con concerns? Okay. So with with that in mind, what Jeff was speaking about in terms of having some sort of way of doing the video and everything, and you may want to talk with um, uh, Attorney Rybeck, but that might still be something you want to continue with. Valid point. point. Thank you. Streaming one way out so that people can view it um, is fairly simple. Uh, to get um, participation back in might require still a Zoom account or something or um, um, some way for them to call in or, you know, be addressed auto by audio any, anyway, right? There may, you may want to have, and that could be another one of these, try it out for a month and see if it winds up being necessary or not. But it, it has been a point of discussion about, you know, if people, you know, you may still have commissioners who are not entirely comfortable. You may have general public, well, this application is of interest to me, but I don't really want to go out quite yet. So you, you may want to have a plan in place for that. So, so uh, uh, Stacy, regarding all of that and the discussion of this serve, if you put up an agenda or uh, with uh, some time frame for people to respond with email or whatever, is that would that be a is that something that was discussed? It was something, for instance, that we did with the board of finance uh, when they set the budget because we couldn't have that kind of that yeah. town meeting public hearing, such a public hearing. Technically, we allowed for input in advance. That's kind of why I'm thinking you might just want to do a double check run by attorney Rybeck because that has been a discussion item is okay. The, the, all the executive orders kind of gave some leeway as we were going into this, what kind of leeway are they going to be giving as we're coming out of this? Mm -hmm. Got it. So let me, uh, you know, I, I can work with you, Stacy, on that. And also, you know, I can talk to Ian who works for me, you know, his, his, uh, Forte is audio and communication. So, uh, you know, we might be able to work out some um, workarounds on that so that people can uh, do stuff from home and people are more comfortable in meetings. So I've heard back from, you know, people on EDC too, who said, you know, they're kind of anxious to start meeting face to face. Agreed. Um, Agreed. I've heard by and large, people seem like they very much want to go back to us. I do know of some people who would be a little wary. Yeah, absolutely. So let, let's see if we can create options for, for everybody. Before. Okay, so where does that leave us? That leaves us with... Um, well, we have the... We in favor of my motion is opening the door to having face-to-face um, -face meetings. doesn't mean you have to. I mean, we still have the option of doing Zoom meetings if, if, the, if a board or commission chooses to do so. Uh, of they course. Can, you know, of so course. For right now they, they have the option. So they say, yeah, we want to open up and then we can look at certainly recording it and having it streamed out. And if possible, we can have, have it streamed live. And if we need to do input, worst case scenario, they can call in on a cell phone and we can put it on speakerphone. So, you know, true. Very true. There's Very ways true. To, you know, you have, you have a conference call phone and, and that we can use. As well. <laughs> that doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> Even Unfortunately. Better. Yeah. But we could, to your point, we could put it on a cell phone and people could call, you know, it's not a problem. So, let's, okay, let's, very good. So, uh, therefore, I, did we make motions here? Yeah, I'm yep. sorry. You did. We I have a motion in a second to yeah. move forward with um, governmental public meetings initially, correct? Yep. And then re-examine opening up to others uh, as we go forward. Yep. Um, so, uh, I, there's, I'll, I vote aye. Edmond I. Roger I. Jeff I. Very good. Very good. Uh, that means we can, uh, I'll let the Board of Finance know that they can have a meeting and whomever else will begin to let our commissioners know or our chairman of our commissions know that they can have public meetings <clears throat> should they choose. And I will check, I will check with Mike Ryback. Let me make a note on this for myself. And uh, we'll, we'll have to address that as we go, go into it. Um, so we have a motion and a second. I voted aye. Everybody else voted aye. Every, all approved. 
uh, to move forward with governmental in in person meetings. Uh, number six is a board and commission reappointment. Uh, it's a pretty simple one. Reappoint Jeremy Weed to the ambulance commission. He's currently serving. His term expires at the end of this month. So, uh, so moved. Uh, Second. All in favor? Aye. Roger I. Jeff I. Was a Roger I, a Jeff I, and Ed Moon says I. Jeremy Weed is reappointed. I do have one tax refund, gentlemen. Uh, as recommended by the tax clerk, the town of Thomaston, uh, in the amount of $12.94 to Clayton Burns of 90 Wood at Wood Heights. Second. Okay. Jeff Dunn, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any yep. opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, I have no communications. I don't believe there's anybody out there for public comment. Is there? And I just had uh, one thing uh, that was going around uh, on social media asking about recycle bins. And someone had suggested um, why, why we don't do weekly recycles and, um, and whatnot. How, did, how does that work? <clears throat> I mean, is, is, does it cost us money every other week when recycle is picked up or? Correct. If we needed to collect weekly, it would increase our fees to our, uh, to our hauler. Um, not, not as we um, dispose of it, because currently our recycling still gets disposed. The tipping fee is still zero on recycling, but it would be an increased fee to our hauler. Um, and uh, that was the reason why we went with bi-weekly um, initially. Now, by and large, I think most people, and I could be wrong, Jeff, but I think by and large, most people uh, do just fine with uh, bi-weekly recycling. I, I probably come close to filling my bill bin, excuse me, uh, or do so. But uh, I certainly make certain that I, you know, I cut cardboard up, I pack it down, I do those kinds of things. Um, people have the option, although not right at the moment, but people do have the option to purchase additional bins if they want. Right now, we couldn't give them to them even if they wanted them because the hauler, these are the haulers, by the way, not the towns. The hauler owns them. We do not. Uh, currently, his, the manufacturer is not producing them fast enough. So they are on back order to try to get more of these uh, bins, uh, what, or call them what you will. Uh, and we're, we're kind of up against it. We're actually, he's actually got some older ones that I said, well, refurbish them as best you can, sanitize them, we'll use them in the interim. I mean, we, so that's the position we're in currently. But that's and only if, a current. And if people, I assume by people recycling, it's saving the town money, right? Because we pay more on garbage hauling than recycling. Well, we pay, we pay a tip fee for anything that goes into the garbage. That is correct, right. as opposed to recycling. The so question, I guess, at hand, I guess the question at hand, Jeff, would be, if you went to a weekly, how much more is it going to cost, and is it worth what you're going to save in the tip? Now, I got to say this. When I look at how much recycling there is, well, it's a sizable amount, okay? I don't think, I don't, I don't think it would make that much of a difference in the tip, I mean, in, in terms of the tip versus going weekly. Uh, uh, my, at least my general sense is that the vast majority of people are fine with the bi-weekly. At least that's my sense. Okay. I'm not saying it's a fact. I'm saying it's my sense. And if it's something we wanted to look into, I would have to, we could do that. Uh, I wouldn't want to do it in this budget year. This budget's already set. By the way, we've got great rates from our, our uh, hauler. If you guys may recall from the, the contract that we renewed um, for five years. I mean, the guy was tremendous. Uh, he's, he's level for five years. You can't do any better than that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we could look at it. Um, but again, I would not advise doing it at this point when we have a new budget. I could ask, certainly, as we get closer to the next budget year, if there's a great interest and see what the increased cost would be. Sounds good. I got nothing else. OK. Uh, we have no communications. So at this 
point, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved, Roger. Jeff will second. All in favor? All Aye, right. Roger. Aye, I'm sure. Uh, meeting is adjourned at 8.31 p.m. Thank you, gentlemen. See you guys See later. Tomorrow. Have a good evening. Yep, yep, good night. Good night, Stacy. Good night. And thank you. No, no problem. Did you have something, Roger, you needed? No, all set. Thank you. Okay.